buying houses for a thousand dollars buying houses under five thousand dollars is it really too good to be true it's not but you do have to make some changes to your traditional rental model if you're going to pursue some of these super low price deals so i have a whole playlist on houses under five thousand dollars you can go ahead and watch the playlist above but right now what i want to do is take you through the entire process so what's the entire process of getting a house under five thousand dollars to getting it rent ready i'm going to talk some more in detail about different parts so check out this whole playlist houses under five thousand dollars so you can see every single step of the way through getting a house from buying it all the way to getting it rent ready. But in this one, I'm just going to give you kind of a quick overview. I dig a lot deeper into some of the other facets in the rest of this playlist. So first of all, you've got to find the deal, right? So I talk a little bit in some of the videos in this playlist on how I find these deals. But once you've found the deal, the biggest thing is you just need to be able to close quickly. Usually there's some kind of distress. There's some reason why the seller needs to get rid of this house. So help them solve their problems. How, what are the seller's problems and how are you gonna help them solve them? When you can do that, you're able to close deals, close them quickly and help somebody get rid of, the, the house may not be the problem, there may be some other underlying problem and the house is a solution to help them solve that problem. So, so help them out, add value, help the person with whatever problems they have and then get closed on the house. Once you've closed on the house, now you need to figure out how am I gonna monetize this house? Having several different exit strategies is the only way to go into a deal. So when you're talking about different exit strategies, a lot of what's best is gonna depend on your goals with real estate investing. So I don't have a ton of time. I mean, there's four big goals with real estate investing, equity pay down, cash flow, tax strategy, and appreciation. You can check out my course down below, Get Started in Real Estate Investing. Go to the Teachable list down below and you can check out a course that I have about getting started, it's super cheap, and it's gonna talk through each of those four goals. What are the pluses of each goal? What are the minuses of each goal? And how you leverage those to get where you wanna go. But depending on which goal you have, which pluses and minuses, your exit strategy may be different. You may be like focused on trying to get it as a flip. You may be focused on trying to get the low cost home as a traditional rental, or you may want something else. For my goals, what works best is I get them out on lease with option to purchase. So what does that mean? I talk in some of the other videos in here about lease options and also in my uh, rental house playlist and my real estate investing playlist. You can check out those playlists, but with a rent to own, um, there, there's several structures of rent to owns. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a tax professional. Use professional advice. I'm just talking from my experience and some anecdotal evidence. But with my lease option, I have a lease and an option to purchase. So with the lease agreement um, on some of these, what, what I've been doing recently is I've had lease agreements where the tenant is responsible for the maintenance on the home. So why do I do that? The reason is because what I'll do is when I get these homes, these sub $5,000 homes recently, I'll get all the major systems working. I'll make sure the water's working. I'll make sure the power's working, probably get the HVAC working. And then I'm going, to, but there's still a ton of work that needs done to the home. But um, since I'm not in the home very much and I've done all the difficult maintenance, all the hard things, the things that you absolutely need for the home to be livable, I can now offer this at an extremely low lease price to somebody who's willing to do the rest of the work. And then they also have an option to purchase. So for some set period of time, they have a contract in place with a guaranteed price for the home, which is usually going to be pretty low compared to comparable home sales in the area. It's high enough that I can still make some money, but it's low enough that the purchaser is still getting a good deal compared to what else is available out there. And also what else is expected to be available during the option of purchase time because you have to figure they can exercise this option to purchase years in the future with the ones that I've been signing. So I'm not able to sell the home to somebody else, uh, but they are able to buy the home um, at that option price. So I need to set that option price high enough that 
um, it's still going to be a good deal for them and for me years in the future since I'm basically handing, handicapping myself with an inability to sell that home. So that's the structure that I use to monetize the home. Also, as a backup, if I couldn't find someone willing to do a lease option, I also have the exit plan of putting more money into the home, making it a traditional rental, which then I need to rent it for more money, and then make, keeping it as a traditional rental. But um, you know that you can see down below in the teachable course, you know which goals that aligns with and why that's not necessarily what I'm looking to do on on these homes. And then also as a tertiary goal, uh, which would not be aligned with my real estate investing strategy, but would still make the home profitable, I could fix up the home, flip it, and sell it as a traditional sale. So that would be the order based on my goals that I would be doing these in. If you're extremely cash flow focused, then you would be the opposite. You'd be trying to flip the home. Um, and then if you couldn't flip the home, then maybe um, go to the lease option and then to the rent. Um, so depending on your goals and what you're willing to risk and what you want to get out of it is going to determine which exit strategy you're going to be focused on. So that's how I monetize the home. So now we've, we've purchased the home. <clears throat> now we've talked about purchasing the home and we've talked about monetizing uh, the home and um, then facilitating your exit strategies would be the last thing that we really want to do. So in my case, with the lease with option to purchase, my exit strategy is to ultimately get the tenant to be able to purchase the home. So it's incumbent on me to go ahead and help my tenants get their credit where it needs to be so that way they're actually a lendable candidate. And then also if they need advice with getting the home so the home is lendable. Usually when we've just done plumbing and electricity, that home isn't in a lendable condition. Um, and then also a lot of times the tenant who's doing the lease option is not credit worthy. So now my job is to help that tenant become credit worthy and also to help them with advice on getting the home to where it is lendable. If your exit strategy was keeping as a traditional rental, then your big goal is continuing to maintain and manage the property, is how you're going to continue monetizing that property over time. Possibly refinance the property if you're going to do some kind of cash out, depending on which your goals are. And then obviously, if you're going to uh, flip the home, you know, getting that house marketed so you can sell it for the most money that the market will bear um, are the, the, the end games. So I think the big things with these uh, $1,000 to $5,000 homes is that middle section, that monetizing the property. Because whereas if you're buying a, a pretty much a market ready home, you can kind of skip that intermediate step because you don't have a huge uh, time gap um, between your entry and your exit. However, with a lot of these lower end homes, you're going to have some intermediate period of time where you're, you're either in an extended remodel to flip where you're not monetizing it at all, you're in an extended remodel to rent it where you're not monetizing it, or you can start monetizing it quickly with a lease option to purchase. Um, so it gets monetized a lot quickly and then it gives you time for your ultimate exit strategy, which is helping that tenant be able to purchase the home. Or if they don't purchase it, then um, turning that property over and then doing it again or changing your strategy on the house. <clears throat> Bottom line, leases with option to purchase are a great strategy in my opinion for monetizing these sub $5,000 homes. It gets them monetized quickly and it gives you a long-term exit strategy. If you've watched to this point, please you owe me a like and a subscribe to this channel for the uh, content that I'm pushing out. Please, if you made it to this point, you owe me a like and a subscribe. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. It really means a lot to me. Also, if you don't, if you aren't familiar, also, if you don't have rock solid goals for your real estate investing, please check out my teachable course uh, down below on getting started. Also, if you want to learn how I manage my properties remotely, I have another course down there on managing properties remotely. It's the exact same training that I give to my full-time property manager uh, to manage my properties. So check out that training down below and that will definitely get you started in the right direction. <clears throat>